another type of special vehicles which well we still have to uh, to see be, become operational are the so-called personal air vehicles or you could also refer to them as where is my flying car as you will often hear when people talk about the future in fact it was henry ford who once said who once predicted that a combination of the airplane and the motor car would be coming and he said he knew he, it sounded ridiculous but he said mark my words it will come I'm not sure if the combination of car and, and, uh, and airplane is, is really the ultimate solution, but person, a personal aircraft in a way is also a flying car. So using a personal vehicle in a way as we nowadays use the car is also, in, in, in my view, uh, answering the dream, where's my flying car? And in a way we are already moving in that direction. Imagine that in the past we did not have the point-to-point the, the -point air travel from regional airports as we have nowadays. And then the next step to more customized air travel is of course the net jet formula where you have on-demand flying. And you even see occasionally already the air taxi uh, the, the even more on-demand and more individualized, the mode of transport for, for air travel. And in Looking at it in this way, then the, the, the sky car or the personal air transport vehicle is nothing but a logical continuation of this trend to more individual air travel when and where you want it. And here we see a vehicle on the, on the lower side, which is called the, the Müller sky car. It's experimental, has been experimental for quite a long uh, time already. And, but his, his dream is, is very interesting, very inspiring and challenging. His idea was that if you are able to uh, design a vehicle, a, a personal air vehicle, and you are able to make it cheap when it's uh, produced like, an, like a car, so a mass production, he aimed for getting the price just as low as a car. And then look at the other specifications. An SUV compared to a, a, a flying vehicle with the same mileage, but able to fly you f with a speed of 500 kilometers per hour in a straight line. Means from Amsterdam to Paris in, uh, in, in an hour, or from Amsterdam to the Mediterranean in two hours. The idea was that it should transport four persons, have the uh, vertical takeoff mode, and then the, uh, the, the engines would extend and create uh, larger wings, basically move uh, to the other side and allow to fly uh, more efficiently vertical. You could avoid traffic jams and you don't even need the infrastructure anymore to, to reach destinations. And this dream, uh, the, the Müller Skycar, uh, I haven't heard a lot of it lately. I'm not sure uh, how, how they are doing right now. But there are other examples and, and for us in Delft, closer to home, there is for instance the, the uh, Dutch uh, company PELV, PELV Europe as they are officially called, um, personal uh, air uh, vehicle for landing and, and flying vehicle, PELV. And this is a, uh, the, the principle in which it flies is a gyrocopter, but it tries again to combine the, the principle of a uh, sort of motorcycle with three wheels in one vehicle. And the slide says here that it's a, it's a proven concept, and it is because this vehicle has already actually flown. The combination of the, the, they were first tested independently, the, the, the requirements for a motorcycle and uh, the, the gyrocopter. And you are now able to, f to drive it. It uh, fulfills all the requirements to uh, drive on the, on the road. And also since April 2012, it is actually flying. Uh, because that was when the maiden flight was done in, in the Netherlands. And uh, currently there are still test flights ongoing and there are many people considering to buy one. Uh, currently mainly uh, military but also police and probably then it will first be used in remote areas. But who knows, this might be the, the future vehicle for personal air transport. The actual combination of a car and a, uh, a plane also continues to inspire people. Uh, here we see the, the uh, Terra Fugia, uh, a, a vehicle uh, which is both a car and an, and an airplane, uh, created by a spin-off of MIT. And uh, the idea is that you are able to uh, keep this vehicle in your own garage 
you drive a little distance to the airport and then you take off like a normal plane because the wings can be extended. Well, there's a lot of technological and economical uh, challenges and also legal uh, certification challenges, but I think that as soon as you're able, as somebody's able to solve this technological puzzle, because that's what it is in the end, if you're able to put all the pieces together in the right way, there is this huge demand and you might be very, very rich. So the challenge is out there. A completely different type of vehicles, um, a, a specific class of unmanned vehicles, in fact, are what, is so, what are the so-called micro-aerial vehicles. The universities and also in our, our university, there's a lot of research in the, into these uh, vehicles. Of course, because of the scale, the very small scale of these, uh, these vehicles, they're easy to build and realize yourself. And here we see two examples of the, the Delphi, as we call our micro-air vehicle. The, the Delphi, this is the size of a, of a bird. It's about the span of, a, of one foot. And uh, it was, uh, the, for, for a while, it held the record of the smallest vehicle with cameras, flying vehicle with cameras. And this, the idea to, to mimic nature, or biomimetics, as it sometimes is called, um, this, this idea is to, to mimic these flying uh, creatures. We succeeded in this uh, very well, apparently, because one day it was even attacked by a bird of prey when we were trying to observe a building that was on fire and film it. Next to it, you see uh, the, the next step, which is called the Delphi Nano, and this is really insect size. The span is around 12 centimeters, so let's say a large dragonfly. In, in a way, it uses the same principles. Also has cameras on board and is the, a very small vehicle, uh, currently also world record holder as far as I know. And these, these vehicles are adapted for different applications and used uh, all the time. And uh, they will replace the larger helicopters, for instance, uh, for some applications, for surveillance, uh, for instance, or, for, or entering dangerous areas. The largest challenges that, that uh, the, the largest challenge that currently awaits us personally, I think, is to develop the future green aircraft. On this Earth, we currently have around uh, 7 billion people and it's projected to grow around 9 billion. And this means the resources are getting scarce. And already today, some resources like metals are getting scarce. We see the oil price fluctuating uh, a lot. And this is because we have reached peak oil. We are around peak oil. This means that we can still find new oil and then the more difficult to obtain oil. But we are also, uh, the, the demand is increasing faster. And this means that we have uh, gone, we are currently at peak oil. And this is indicated by the fluctuating unstable oil price, which we are currently experiencing. And this means we need to transition to new energy sources. And well, there are, there are many uh, mentions. After oil, we will have gas, natural gas, for, for some time. And here you see a projection of different energy sources and how we can use them and how they are expected to be used in the, in the near future. Um, this puts a huge challenge for us in, in aerospace because we are heavily dependent on fossil fuels. They have an enormous high intensity of energy per volume and per weight. And so to design an, an aircraft which is independent of these fossil fuels is a huge challenge. We have, have numerous uh, projects inside our faculty and uh, one of the, uh, the ideas is to replace the current configuration of the aircraft by a blended wing body in which the fuselage and the wing have become one body, one lifting body. And this, uh, together with many other advantages, might be a way to increase the efficiency of an aircraft which allows it to change to different uh, energy sources. Because making a 747 uh, fly on electricity is not something that's easily done. And maybe we'll have to fly slower and we have to be in the aircraft for, for longer. And perhaps this is also a reason to move to the personal mode because cars are slower than high-speed trains, but still are an efficient way to get somewhere. So we'll have to really have to see how this energy uh, problem will be solved in the future and currently we do not know what the next energy source or medium will be for aircraft in the future. It could be a number of things and maybe uh, the future energy sources will deliver all the energy in electricity. 
but maybe we can also convert it or need to convert it to synthetic fuel. You see here the Helios aircraft, which tries to also use the, the, uh, the solar radiation to generate energy. And it actually can fly for many months, it has flown for many months, by using this solar energy alone. Something which was thought impossible for a long time, but by increased efficiency in construction and weight reduction, we were able to make this, uh, this aircraft. And of course, we now have a manned version, which is called the Solar Impulse. It's on the edge what's possible, and we'll have to see what happens. But we cannot rule out that electricity and solar energy, they all will, might play a role in the future energy uh, supply and uh, the sources, both the sources medium for future aircraft. And this is the, the really big puzzle which we have to solve in the, in the coming years. And this is also the, uh, the final slide of this module, the first module, introduction part, the overall introduction part. And in the following video clips, you, we will follow a little block of air along a streamline to better understand the aerodynamics. And this will be done by the tutors, uh, Mr. Timmer and Mrs. Bell. And I wish you a lot of pleasure with those lectures.